In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an all new flight controller from Foxeer. Now, this is called the Foxeer F722 Mini V2. And this is not the only thing they're going to be releasing. You're going to be seeing a new ESC come into play here. And I'm really guessing it's going to have some sort of a 10 volt regulator. And I'll explain what I mean in a bit here. So everything is linked down below. Also, the timestamps will be down below. So some of the things we're going to be covering is the overall breakdown, the advanced breakdown for advanced users. Then we're going to go into the basic setup guide if you are new. So you can skip to whatever part of the video you would like. With that being said, let's get started. So out of the box, basically, all you get is the flight controller itself and four rubber grommets. As you can tell, that's about it. You don't get any wires and we don't get an instruction manual. So all we get is really the flight controller and the soft bounce for it. Now, the instructions for this are kind of vague and it does have some errors, which I'll explain as we go along here. So let's go ahead and cover some quick specs here. So we do have OSD MPU 6000 gyro. It's using the F722. We also see we have memory here. It doesn't have any extra voltage regulator other than a three and a five volt. So there's nothing special in that perspective, but they have bumped up the filtration on this. Uh, pretty decent, I would say, which is really great to see, especially on 20 by 20 stack, um, especially if you're gonna be putting this on some sort of a 6S build if you were ever going to do that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the advanced breakdown part. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and start with the advanced breakdown here. Here we have the top of the board and here we have the bottom of the board. So first of all, the, the first thing you always want to look at is the arrow and make sure the arrow is pointing that way. And let's get started here. So for OSC, they're using the AT chip and this takes 3.3 .3 volts if you're ever curious. And uh, if you have a Maxim chip, those usually take five volts. Oh, they always take five volts. Here we have our MPU 6000 gyro. Right here we have our shot key diode. Now this right here is in charge of uh, the five volt between the five volt regulator and also the USB. So for example, if you plug in the USB and the flight controller boots, that's great. But then if you go plug in the uh, battery and it doesn't boot, then usually this went out. Most flight controllers, usually, sometimes they go out if something happened. So that's what that's for right there. We see there's a lot of filtration, like a lot. They're, they're like I've never seen a, such a micro with so much filtration going on for it here. Here we have our 27 megahertz resonator for the OSD. This is the eight megahertz for the flight controller or the microcontroller unit, which is the F722. Now, there are a couple things I don't like, which we're gonna cover right now. So here's a five volt regulator, there's the memory, and here is where you would actually put in your ESC input. We have uh, ground would be here, and then we have VCC up here. So hopefully you can see that, yeah, you can. And here it seems like you're greeted with a diode in the beginning. So this kind of, hopefully that's what it's for. It's, it's to protect you from reverse polarity. So if you ever flip these, you have less probability of burning your ESC or your flight controller. So that's really great. And uh, if you didn't flip them and it went through, then you're greeted with a big fat capacitor to smooth out that voltage against voltage spikes, which is really nice to see here. However, the biggest issue, in my opinion, it's it's not really, well, actually, there's two problems. It's not really a big issue, but it can be. So, for example, if you're setting up a video transmitter that takes battery voltage, well, you have no pads for that. So you're going to have to get kind of creative, and I'll show you what I mean. So here's the VTX yellow line ground and just 5 volts. That's all they give us. So if you wanted battery voltage, what you have to do is you have to get it from the bottom side right here. And for example, if you didn't use a connector for the ESC, then you're going to have to wrap the ESC's VCC with the video transmitter's VCC and solder them right there. So that's one annoying thing. Another thing that I noticed in the documentation is that they were showing you how to connect this into your uh, DJI setup. However, if you do that, you'll burn it. They're showing you to connect it right here as well. Um, unless you're using a Cadex Vista, you'll be okay depending on your your voltage but um you don't want to connect the normal one because this thing doesn't have a 9 or a 10 volt regulator so just be, be very careful that you if you have a dji setup this is not something i'd recommend for you to purchase unless you're using cadex vista other than that you want you don't want this one for a dji setup unless again you're using cadex vista now other than that it's pretty loaded with just about everything you might want to see you have camera control on the side here you have rssi uh, which can also be used for smart port for some reason that's what they're stating here but you can actually use smart port almost anywhere because this is an f7 uh, we have you know another rx5 5 volt ground and this is where your default s bus would be set up and obviously tx1 if you want a smart port telemetry and yeah that's about it here's your camera ground 5 volt and the VD vtx is right next to it and again 5 volts you'll be okay because this one is the 5 volts and if you want a battery voltage you're gonna have to go all the way up here for your video transmitter 
and it does come obviously with the soft mounts as you saw when in the beginning of the video and that's about it for the dance breakdown there's really nothing else to show you here so let's go ahead and jump into the basic setup guide and uh, we'll take it from there all right guys so right now we're going to go ahead and cover the fpv camera setup guide here so i always recommend to always just give your camera five volts even if it takes more it's always better because you'll reduce the risk of having noise in your video feed which means it's lines and it could be pretty bad at times so just take it to five volts so first of all, let's go ahead and grab the 5 volts. The place where you're supposed to grab it from is right here. So we're just going to go ahead and put that right there. And we're basically done with 5 volts here. Next, we need ground. So let's go ahead and grab ground. It's just going to be the next one over right there. And we're just going to go ahead and set that up just like that. There we go. So now we have 5 volts and ground. So the next one is going to be our yellow wire, which is right there. It says cam. So we're just going to go ahead, boom and we're basically done now this is where it gets interesting so this time we do actually have camera control on this however there's two types in the market there's ones that say you know there's cameras that say rx and there's cameras that say osd like this one right here so if your camera says the osd just like this one then that's uh, then this one's gonna work and the place you'd actually connect it is right here so it says cc camera control and just like that, you can actually change the settings of your camera through your uh, goggles and your controller at the same time instead of having to plug in that OSD remote button, which can be really nice. I never use it, but if you ever wanted to, it's there and it's available for you. So that's really it for the FPV camera. Let's go ahead and jump into the next step. All right, so in this part of the video, I'm going to be showing you how to connect your video transmitter. However, before doing that, you need to make sure what your input voltage for your video transmitter is. There's only two in the market, five volts only and VBAT. VBAT means battery voltage. So we're going to do both cases here. We're going to start with the five volts only method currently. So if your video transmitter takes five volts only, then you're going to grab your red wire, this one right here, and we're just going to go ahead and run it to the bottom of the board right over here. So that's where you give five volts. So this is, we'll call this the five volts only path. Okay. So now if you had a battery voltage video transmitter, it's going to be in a slightly different place. Just the red wire is the only difference going to be here. So if we take a closer look at the connector here, we see it has a number eight and here also has a, the number eight right there. So eight is RX. And if we take a closer look here, we see that basically one is ground and two is VCC. So this right here would be ground and this one would be VCC. VCC means battery voltage. So if your video transmitter takes battery voltage, then the place where you want to go ahead and connect it would be right over here, right there. So we'll call that VBAT, so battery voltage. So that's the only difference here between 5 volt video transmitters and battery voltage video transmitters if you're setting it up on this setup. So let's go ahead and carry on here. So now let's go ahead and connect our ground and the ground is just going to go right there. So the next one over is going to be our video line, which is one of the most important things, obviously, so you can get your video feed. So we're going to go ahead and grab our yellow wire here also. So we're just going to cross over and we're just going to go put it in on that v VTX pad right there. And just like that, we're completely done. But if you wanted to connect smart audio IRC tramp protocol, we can do that right now. So we'll go ahead and grab that. Most of them nowadays do come with these protocols so we could take full advantage of them and it's going to be right there. And that's going to be TX5. So in your Betaflight ports tab, that's U Art 5. You either set up smart audio or the IRC tramp protocol under the peripherals drop down box in the UART5 section. And well, that's really it. Let's go ahead and jump to the next step. All right, guys, so in this part of the video, we are going to be covering SBUS, IBUS, and also the TBS Crossfire, if you didn't know how to connect it here. So first of all, let's start with the SBUS. So we're going to start with the signal, which is the most important here. And that's going to go right over here to that RC pad. So let's go ahead and connect that. And what's really nice, since this is an F7 here, so this could work as SBUS. And if you had FlySky IBUS, it would also be in the same exact position. Now, if you had the TBS Crossfire, then what you want to do is the TBS Crossfire usually has two pads. It'll have a TX pad and it will have an RX pad. So the way you would set that up is you would take the RX pad from the TBS Crossfire and you're going to want to route it just right over here. And the TX is going to go exactly in the same place as the SBUS and IBUS here. So that's how you'd connect them. The only extra wire you would need to set up for your TBS Crossfire would be your RX and that would go to the TX1 right here. 
Now we're going to go ahead and give them power. All three of them are exactly identical. They'll take five volts and ground from the same exact place. So here's our five volts right here. And we're just going to route it right over here. And that's it. There we go. We got five volts. Last one is going to be ground. So let's go ahead and grab ground. Sorry about the white here. And we're just going to go ahead and set that up just like that. There we go. And ground is going to be right here. And you're basically good to go on any kind of setup. And it should be set up automatically uh, under your UARTS tab, but you will need to go into your configurations tab and find the receiver section and make sure you either select SBUS or IBUS if you're using IBUS and or the TBS Crossfire if you're using TBS Crossfire. And um, well, that's really it for this part. Okay, so right now we're going to go ahead and connect the 4 in one ESC here. Now there's a couple main things you need to always look for, which are, so we have VCC, we have ground, we also have motors 1 through 4, and we have current, and we have telemetry. And this is what you'll always find on an ESC. Sometimes you might be missing the telemetry part, but this is exactly what you'll see on most cases here. Now here we have them broken out in this way. On the other side you do have the connector. But this is the bottom side where you have the pads because it doesn't come with the connector. So you might have to solder direct here. Now, first of all, we take a look at this ESC. This is a Mumba ESC here. And it starts off with ground right here. So the most left one right here is going to be ground. So actually what you want to do is just connect ground with ground. Very simple. And the next wire over here on this ESC is actually VCC. So we're just going to go ahead and connect VCC to VCC. And this is the correct orientation. If you flip it over or read the documentation, you kind of see that. And these right here are going to be motors one, two, and three, and four. And this is the orientation. So this would be actually motor one, then it would be motor two, then motor three, and then motor four. And then you just connect them. Like for example, here's motor one, which would be this one right here. And that would just go ahead and connect to motor one. And the next one over is motor two. And you kind of get the idea here. And that will actually connect to motor two right here. So boom, right there. And that's how you connect it to motor four. Now on this one, it says NC, which is not used. So we could skip that for right now. And we can look at that last one. The last one says current reading. So right now we're going to go ahead and get the current part. And we're just going to go ahead and run it right there. So any ESC that says current, that's where you want to set it up by the number eight. I know it's hard to see in this picture, but this is number eight. So it's right there. And then this one would be your telemetry. However, this one doesn't have telemetry and it says not connected. But let's just pretend this had telemetry. And uh, that's where you actually want to go ahead and get telemetry from. So you'd go ahead right here. We'd go right here. We'll actually cross over and we'd set that up. So we have telemetry in the back. Then we have current. 4, 3, 2, 1, which are the motors, VCC, which is battery voltage, and then ground, which is ground. And now like this, you'll be able to control any 4-in-1 ESC. Once you know these basics, VCC, ground, motors 1 through 4, current, and telemetry, and you're good to go on any ESC. It's really that simple, just connecting the puzzle, and you'll be basically done. So with that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully someone found it useful. Also, check the links down below. It's a great support channel. Come join my Patreon. I do a ton of giveaways, and you get access to all these kinds of crazy cool stuff, like my open hardware schematic flight controller and everything of that nature. And you also get access to my secret shop. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.